morning saints and welcome this morning. Thank you very much for joining us. This indeed is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you very much for joining us. We would like to take this moment to welcome all the saints in Lazaria, uh, the, the saints in Clayville and the saints in Cosmos City and all the saints all over the world from wherever you are watching us or you are joining us this Sunday morning. We would like to take this time to um, just welcome you and take this time to uh, encourage you and remind you that God loves you and as we go into the word of God uh, the worship team will be leading us shortly in, in song but before they do I would like us to just go into the word of God and read from the book of Psalm chapter 95 from verse 1 it reads as follows come let us sing for, for joy to the Lord let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song for the Lord is great God, is, a great, is the great God, the great King above all gods. In His hand are the depths of the earth, and the mountains peak belong to Him. The sea is His, for He made it, and His hands firm to the dry land. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for He is our God, and we are the people of His pasture, the flock under His care. Uh, since this the beautiful psalm just reminds us that we need to come before the Lord and bow before Him in worship. And this morning as the worship team will be, or the music team will be leading us in song, let us um, come before the Lord with thanksgiving in our hearts and, and, and be grateful to the Lord and worship Him uh, together this morning as we hand over to the worship team to lead us in music. You unravel me and make me melody. You surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone. I'm no longer the slave to fear. I am a child of God I'm no longer the slave to fear oh, I am a child of God Yes, I'm a child of God From, From my mother's womb you have chosen me, love has called my name, I've been born again to your family, your blood flows through my veins, I'm no longer the slave.
Thank you, music team, for leading us so beautifully in, in worship this morning as we take this time to uh, go to, to the Word of God this morning to hear what the Lord has to say to us. Uh, Pastor Ranzulase is one of our elders and he will be speaking to us this morning. But before he uh, takes over and speaks to us this morning, I would let us just quickly go and uh, uh, take a read in the book of Matthew chapter 4. We are going to be reading together from uh, verse 1 and it reads as follows. Then Jesus was led uh, by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell the stones to become bread. Then Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Saints, this morning, as we read here, we are reminded uh, by the Word of God that the Word of God is life-giving to us. As we listen to it, we don't just listen to it for the sake of it, but we listen to it because it is life-giving. And the Bible reminds us also that um, the, heaven and earth may pass away, but as for the Word of God, it will never pass away. And um, like Jesus, as he asked his disciples, after many people that had deserted him, he asked his disciples, do you also want to follow and live too? And Peter answers uh, Jesus, he says, no, we will not go because you have got words of eternal life. And so this morning, saints, as we listen to the Word of God, as Pastor Antonis speaks to us, let us be reminded that the Word of God gives life to us. It, it is life-giving and it is eternal. So uh, Pastor Antonis will take over and speak to us uh, this morning uh, from the heart of God. Saints, be greeted in the wonderful name of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ this morning. Thank you. Uh, to the eldership of the church for allowing me this morning to come and share the word with you. Let us go to the book of 1 Samuel chapter 9. I want us to go and read from verse 3 and then even the last verse which is verse 27. In the New King James Version it says, Now the donkeys of Kish, Saul's father, were lost. And Kish said to his son Saul, Please take one of the servants with you and arise and go and look for the donkeys. And I want us to go from verse 27, which is the last, which is the which is the last verse. And it says, and it says, As they were going down to the outskirts of the city, Samuel said to Saul, Tell the servants to go ahead of us. And he went. But you stand here a while that I may announce to you the word of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you this morning for your word. For your word is life and your word is living. As we are about to share your word, we pray that God, you, announce, you anoint your word and you speak to your children through me. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. The Bible's here in First Samuel chapter 9 verse, 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 verse 3 and 27, it talks about Kish, who was the father to Saul. And it talks about his loss. It talks about his conveniences. The Bible records that Kish donkeys were lost. And then he says to Saul, choose one servant and go with him and look for my donkey. But I want us to go a little bit further before this. In Samuel chapter, first Samuel chapter 8, the Bible records that the children of Israel cried unto the Lord and said unto the Lord that they need a king. And it says that they went to Samuel and say, Samuel, you might have want your sons to rule over us but we don't want them because they were not living according to how God wants us or they were not living a worthy life to become kings for us so now we are seeing God's plan of putting Saul as the king of Israel but before that can happen God inconveniences kings in order to give a plan of making Saul the king of Israel to come into existence. So, 
God inconveniences keys so that he can have an appointment with Saul. Then Kish says to his son, take one of the servants, go with him and look for my donkeys. As you read down in the Bible, through the verse, chapter 9, it says that Saul then took the servant and he went three villages or three cities looking for the donkeys with the servants. And as they were going, it says, a day passes by up until the third day. And Saul says unto the servant, let us go back home and tell father that we can't see his donkeys. Lest that he become worried about where we are. But before they can go back home, the servant who along the, the, the way he was quiet, the servant says to Saul, let us get into the city and ask for the prophet and see if he cannot tell us anything about the whereabouts of the donkey. And Saul says to the servant, but we don't have anything except the bread that we have. That is the little that we can eat. And he says, I have a little bit of a silver in my pockets that we can give unto him. And since I want you to look at how God orchestrated this thing, while they were looking for the donkeys, God go to prophet Samuel and he says to, to prophet Samuel, by this time tomorrow, I will send a young man whom I want you to anoint as the king to Israel. And as they come, as they look, as they approach Samuel, the Bible says, God then says to Samuel, look, the man that I want you to anoint, ah, the man that I want to make him the king of Israel is here. And as they approach Samuel, Samuel realizes that indeed the king of Israel is here. Now, I want us to look at verse number 27. After they have given Samuel and, and, and some God has revealed to Samuel um, what he needs to do. Now, Samuel says unto Saul, Tell your servant to go and leave us behind. Tell the man that has led you to me to go and leave us because I want to give you the word of God. Bazalwani, one, God can use someone in convenience to lead you into your destiny. We see Kish, who is the father to Saul, being in convenience, losing his donkeys, so that Israel can get a king. We see somebody's pain being a vehicle for the nation to receive their king. Kish has lost his donkeys, but in his loss, the nation of Israel is going to gain a king. Some of us, we need to understand that through our pains, God can use it to attach other people's life. We need to understand that some of us, through our loss, in our loss, God can use it to mend the lives of others.
through our pains, God can rea make people realize their destiny. As Saul was worried about the donkeys, Samuel says unto them, I can see that the center of your concern is the donkeys that your father has lost. But let me assure you that since that you have less, you have left, your father has already received, they have already seen the donkeys. So the worry, you should not worry anymore that because God has compensated the loss of your father by seeing that by returning the donkeys. But the aim of the loss was for you to be anointed as a king. The aim of the inconveniences of kings was for children of Israel to receive their king. The aim of this pain of losing was for Saul to meet up with his destiny. Was for Saul to receive his kingship. Many a times when we go through pains and suffering, we think that God has left us. We think that we have done something wrong that maybe God is punishing us. But we forget that it might be a vehicle that is leading us into God's destiny. That is leading us to where God wants us to be. Sometimes we should not concentrate on what we are going through. We should not concentrate on what we have been getting, the letters of retrenchment. We should not concentrate on saying that we have salary cuts. We should not concentrate on the situation that we are in at the right moment. But all we should know that this might lead us into our destiny. Second point is that after the servant has led Saul to Samuel, the prophet to be anointed, Samuel says to Saul, tell this man his time is up. Tell this man to leave us because God's plan is between you and him, not him and your servant and God. So, Bazalwan, sometimes we should allow people whom God has led, whom God has used to lead us to the destiny to go away and we should not be in pain because they have time has ended. What I'm trying to say is, is that, that there will be people whom God will use to lead as to our destiny and we should not feel bad when their time in our lives comes to an end because they have served their purpose we should allow them to go we should not hold on unto them because they may cause harm than the good that they have done Saul was led to Samuel to anoint him by his servant because when Saul said to his servant let us go home it is this servant that said to him before we go home let us go to a prophet of God and find out what he can tell us about the donkey so there will be people in your life that are going to lead you to your destiny. And once you have arrived into your destiny, you have to allow them to go so that you can function fully into what God has called you to do. Their purpose in your life was to take you from where you were to where you have to be and leave you there. Some of our pains in our lives is caused by us wanting other people who are no longer relevant in our life to stay on. And that creates pain. That creates unnecessary squabbles. When it's time to go, let go because 
The chapter that is going to start of your life, it does not involve those that has led into the chapter. The last point that I want to make is that no matter how hard it may seem for you, do not give in up until you get into your destiny. If it means that you need to run and you are tired of running, walk. If it means that you are tired of walking, you need to crawl because as you keep on going, God will give you the strength. And God knows that where your strength is, ends that's where you is going he, to meet up with you to put you to where he wants you to be because the bible says that where our power ends where our strength ends that's where god starts i love an eagle you see an eagle bazarani when it looks down into the river down into the water and when it sees a fish moving up and down you know i love it because the eagle it looks at the fish and it says that if this fish moves i do not need to go to where it's it is so that i, I can catch it the the eagle counts the speed of the fish where it goes and it will calculate the amount of speed that it has to use so that it can meet up with the fish at the point in time and get it and grab it that's how our god looks at us our god looks at our strength and he calculates the amount of strength that it will we will use and the amount of distance the strength that we have that it can take and by the time where we get tired that's where he comes on and rescue us that's where he comes in and help us into getting into our destiny. So this morning, I want us to look at these three things. That one, God can use our pain to lead us into destiny. Two, that God, when he's about to deal with us, he will allow the people that has led us into our destiny to go so that he can deal with us alone. So there is nothing wrong to move away from people who have helped us to get into our destiny. Because God is starting to use, or God is starting a new chapter. And those that he has used or those he has orchestrated the orchestrated them to work with us when their time comes to an end we have to allow god to move with us without them and thirdly the strength that we have is for us to take us to where God wants us to meet so that he can enable us. I love Isaiah when he says, God, he give us strength so that we can mount up with things like eagles. He renew us, he renew the strength that he give us. When we get weary, he renew us. So even this morning, be encouraged, saints, that no matter what we are going through, it is not there to kill you. No matter what you are going through, it is not there so that you become a livestock to people. But it is there to usher you into a new 
destiny into a new place where God wants you to be. It is there to usher you into a space where God wants to function with you. Into a space where God wants to use you mightily. Into a space where God wants to show you that him alone deserve his glory and honor. That him alone, when you look back and say, it is God who was there for me. He wants to usher you into a space where he says, you need to experience his love and grace. Do not cry. Do not mourn. Even in this inconvenience, God is there for you. I pray that this morning you will be strengthened. I pray that this morning you will be encouraged so that when you are tired of running, you can walk. When you are tired of walking, you can crawl up until you meet God's destiny. Up until you come at a space where God says, Hear my weight. Like a son, Samuel anointing him. And he says, I just want to reveal what God has laid into my heart. I just want to reveal to you what God has said to me about your life. To say from now on, let me anoint you as a king to rule over Israel. I pray that you strength, be strengthened. I pray. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you for speaking to us this morning through Pastor Ranzolasi. And thank you for leading us uh, through the authority of your word and encouraging us and empowering us through your word. Father, your word is life unto us. It's life giving unto us. And this morning, Lord, we just want to thank you for speaking to us through Pastor Ranzolasi as he encouraged us from your heart this morning. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Antolasa, for sharing with us uh, this morning and uh, sharing with us the heart of God this morning, encouraging us from the Word of God. You know, as um, we read in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 12, from verse 8, it reads as follows. Uh, three times I pleaded with the Lord. This is Paul speaking. He says, three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, I am strong. Thank you, Pastor Antolasi, this morning once again. Um, we, we are strengthened and we are encouraged from the Word of God. Since, um, since at this point, particular time, uh, I'd like us to take some time and give unto the Lord uh, as we continue to appreciate the goodness of the Lord in our lives and uh, in what He's doing in our lives even during this time. I want us to just read in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 6, chapter 9, excuse me, um, verse 6 to 7. It, it reads as follows. The point is this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give as he has decided in his heart. So the Bible makes it clear to us this morning, saints, that as we give, each one of us must give based on the decision we have made in our hearts. It is a decision that we make to give. And it continues to say, not reluctantly, nor under compulsion. For God loves a cheerful giver. So as we give this morning, let us be reminded that giving to the Lord this morning is a decision that we make. And it should not be because we are forced 
It is not be, be, be because we are compelled to do it, but it, is be, it should be done out of the gratitude that we have towards God for who He is in our lives and giving to Him because we want to give and we are uh, cheerfully doing so. So the Bible reminds us that we should give cheerfully and not do so because we are forced or we are reluctant to do so because God loves a cheerful giver. So as we give to the Lord this morning, uh, saints, let us be reminded of that. Uh, the banking details will be uh, displayed on the screen uh, as, as we give to the Lord and we can um, use those banking details to give to the Lord this morning. May the Lord continue to bless you as you give unto the Lord. Uh, saints, we have come to the end of our meeting this morning and we'd like to thank God for the time that he has given us even as we continue to uh, navigate through this difficult time of the coronavirus and all the things that are happening. We know that even through this time, we know that the goodness of the Lord is with us and he is always watching over us. So as we come to the end of our meeting this morning, may you be blessed in your houses, in your homes, as you, you go to work, uh, peace, be safe, make sure that you uh, follow all the necessary protocols to keep yourself safe wherever you are. Um, and until we meet again next time, may the Lord bless you. We love you.